Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote, and this is an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240. This is a um, liquid cooled uh, CPU cooler with uh, two 120 millimeter fans, hence the 240. Um, and this is a little bit different from a lot of other liquid coolers in that it has a little tiny fan right here um, that's supposed to cool the, the stuff around the CPU, the VRMs and things like that. Now, I don't know that that's gonna be terribly useful, um, but who knows, right? Um, if you've seen the video of the unboxing for my, the AMD base workstation I just built, um, I, at that time I had no intention of replacing the heat sink, but after using it for a little while, the heat sink and fan that came with the CPU is really loud and seems to cycle on and off a lot. And I had to send the motherboard away to get replaced for another reason. And when I did, I took off the CPU heat sink and I found this. And if you know what anything about what a heat sink should look like down here where it interfaces with the CPU, you know that this is exactly what it should not be. This should be flat. It should be a clean, shiny surface because all of these little holes, let me focus in on that. Those are places where you can see where the thermal paste has gone in and the thermal paste has to cover each one of those, these little holes. And even worse than that, if you look here, you can see these deep grooves in between the thermal pipes and the filler, copper filler that they put in here. And this is not flush at all. So this heat sink base and the thermal pipes, they create this wave here. And so it, it explains pretty well why I wasn't seeing great performance. So this, while adequate, it's loud, and there's no reason why without overclocking it or you know, the, the way I was using it that it should be as loud as it was, and this explains why, it's just, it's rubbish. Um, I guess I could have tried to sand that down, but um, that's more work than it's worth. So I figured if you're gonna do something, you might as well overdo it. And so I picked up one of these guys. This is a um, liquid cooler. I've never tried a liquid cooler solution before. So I figured um, since I know that it will fit in the case that I have, I might as well get the big one. There is also a 120 version, which just kind of fits this part. It's like half of this, and it fits where the um, CPU exhaust fan would go um, on, on most uh, ATX size cases. So let's unbox this and then we'll get it installed in the case and then run with it. So, this is mounting hardware and it looks like it comes with some thermal compound and a manual, and I'm not sure what these little guys are. I guess I'll have to read the manual. And this is the part that interfaces with the CPU. And then this is the radiator and the fans. So this is a pretty thick radiator, but I measured it and I know that it'll fit, or I hope it will fit. Sometimes my measuring skills aren't that great. Um, now hopefully the interface here looks better than it does on this guy. Oh, it's worth noting that there's only one four pin power connector and it does everything, which is kind of neat. Um, hopefully it works out. Yeah, so you see how this is flat? 
And if I do that, even with this protective bit of plastic on there, you can see how smooth that is. And now obviously you still want to use thermal paste because at a microscopic level, there's lots of little bumps and things, but you're not supposed to be able to see the bumps like you can here. So that's great. Um, board still off in return. So I did do a uh, installation video, but um, the process is so straightforward that I decided not to include it in the uh, review. It's really straightforward and easy, just like installing any other heatsink and fan. Um, although, you know, the radiator here does add a little bit of a challenge because you have to, you know, take off whatever's up in here in the case and then attach it. You want to do this part last, um, at least on my motherboard, because the, the radiator does block off access to uh, certain parts of the, the board, um, especially where you connect the um, power cable for the uh, heat sink. Um, I had concerns that this fan was going to be loud. It's not. I can't even really tell the difference when I you know put my finger on it to make it stop. This fan did have a little bit of a chirping noise when I first turned it on, but that has gone away uh, since over the you know few hundred hours of using it. And, oh, I did want to also comment that um, I mentioned that I wish that there was a backplate included in here, but it turned out that wasn't necessary because my motherboard had a backplate. The um, heatsink interface here connects to that. It's kind of a pain to do it because uh, you have to push on the backplate while you're screwing it in. Um, and I ended up just kind of like using a shim to push on it from the underside of the case. And once I put that in place, it worked just fine. Um, just want to, the only thing that really is an issue is you just have to, when you, these get pushed in here, you have to make sure they just don't push into the fan. In this case, that's not a problem because there's plenty of space in here and, uh, you know, gravity helps a little bit, but these are pretty stiff. So... Um, it's not a major concern, it's just something that you, you want to be aware of. And, you know, just for completeness, I'm going to put the mic by the fan so you can kind of get a sense of how loud they are. Which is not very loud. Alright, final thoughts time for the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240. It is quiet. Very quiet. And I love it. Even when you run um, a, a stress test like Prime 95 for extended periods of time, it's quiet. You can't hear the thing. And that's just brilliant. Um, unlike the uh, AMD cooler that came with the system, which was even like spinning up and down, making lots of noise when it was the system was doing nothing, um, which just drove me crazy. Interestingly enough, uh, the idle power consumption and power consumption for other states on the system went down with this versus the rate cooler. Um, I think it's hard for me to speculate as to why the idle temp or idle power consumption would go down almost 10 watts, but it has. Um, perhaps the system just isn't working as hard or the fan isn't working as hard uh, to keep things cool, uh, although it seems kind of odd that the fan would draw 10 watts, uh, so I don't know. But it, it did, and it's a measurable thing. Um, it's easy to install. You just have to make sure that you put the radiator in last, which you know kind of makes sense. The price is fantastic. It's about $76, which is well within the territory of a performance um, heat sink and fan, not just a liquid cooling solution. Uh, and I have nothing to uh, complain about there. Uh, you can certainly find heat sinks cheaper. Uh, I don't know that you can find a liquid solution cheaper. But given the performance of this system, I think it's well well within what I would pay and happily pay again. It's also very pleased with the overall performance gains with the system, um, not just with uh, a reduction in power consumption, which I mentioned before, but also an increase in uh, single-threaded and multi-threaded performance, running uh, simple benchmarks or... Um, something like Prime 95, the um, CPU is able to maintain a higher frequency for longer durations, never even coming close to the um, limit temperature. Uh, and so I have nothing, nothing but good things to say about the um, liquid cooler solution. 
um, from price performance I think it's an excellent value it's easy to install and it's quiet so it's um, highly recommended um, I'm not an overclocker so you may this is not that kind of review um, I just wanted a, something that would make the system quieter while maintaining um, or increasing the performance level hopefully you found this useful if you did you know, please subscribe or hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, you want me to test something out, I'm happy to do that. Um, just put them down below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thanks.